Welcome back, Popper people. I am Brent Cook, and today we will be playing and discussing my favorite Popper deck, Cycle Storm. Last week, I uploaded my deck showcase for Cycle Storm. You can find that video in the card above, but also there's another link you can click on that will actually just show you the whole deck list. There's that too. So there's two links. Enjoy those. You get to see my deck in Japanese foil, all that good stuff. But in the comments section, somebody recommended that I try out Shimmering, or I'm sorry, Crystal Grotto. So this is a card from Dominario. When it enters the battlefield, you can scry one. I'm sorry that Magic Online decided not to load its art. I can't control that. But it enters, you scry one, then it taps her colorless, and you can filter any color of mana into a mana of any color that you would like. So this is interesting because it's a land that allows you to dig for uh, Reaping the Grave, Songs of the Damned, Repository Scob, whatever you're doing. It allows you to uh, dig for that, but it also creates red mana on the combo turn for a Dranid Stinger. Okay, so I tried that in a list that was a hybrid list where I played three Ash Barons and three Crystal Grottos with less basics. It was a little bit awkward because we do have Horror of the Broken Lands and Architects that did not cycle off it. And when you add uh, Ash Barons to the mix, that's six colorless lands. But on top of that, Ash Barons shuffles your scries away from Crystal Grotto, which was a little bit weird. So that deck list had a lot of natural friction in it. But the thing that I liked about that deck list was that you could play red in the sideboard without playing a bunch of basics. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And, you know, it didn't go too well, but I'm glad I tried it. But the more important thing is that it got me thinking. So I came to the next list, which was not too bad. Actually, this was a, a hybrid in between. I actually played a couple of different variations of this list. But the main idea here is Maestro's Theater. And with Maestro's Theater, you never end up getting stuck on colorless mana in play because you can always go get one of your three islands your four swamps and then a big change about this list is that i cut the blood celebrant for a basic mountain i've been wanting to cut celebrant for some time i just haven't pulled the trigger um, i think that it's a card that allows you to win easily but i'm not interested in taking the easy path i'd rather just play better play tighter and win in a manner where i don't need this crutch at the end of the game that's terrible to draw until that final end point so I decided that I would play a 12th land, reduce mulligans, that sort of stuff. And I added uh, Dahada's Ploy back into the deck because Kadaltha Red or Burn, if you follow MTG Goldfish, that deck is the most popular deck in the format. It's 20% of the metagame. Out of the last three leagues that I've played, three, okay, so the first league was three red decks. The second league was three red decks. And then the league I played last night was actual four red decks. So, and I'm just talking the same 75. These aren't variations on the same deck. They're like literally copy paste. So I added in a, or a main deck to hottest ploy over the third Tularian wins, which was another change. So testing this, I love the Incendial Life Gain from Maestro's Theater. That helped out quite a bit. And then in the sideboard, we got Pyroblast and Ingot Chewer, which are just huge red pickups. We've always been playing this Flaring Pain as like a last second sort of card, the beat, uh, Prismatic Strands. But really, we wanted Pyroblast and Ingot Chewer because Ingot Chewer is just by far the best answer to Relic uh, in the format. So really interested in this. And I loved having the red cards back in the sideboard. Like this is the most complete sideboard that I felt like in some time. Uh, Mirshell Crab and Pyroblast coming against the blue decks. Mirshell Crab, not only an answer to Relic, but also a counter spell, uh, all that good stuff. We get the beatdown plan with Writhing Necromass. In a previous video, somebody asked, Brian, what does Writhing Necromask come in? You didn't board it in. Uh, and then somebody else was like, yeah, Brian, what, you, you never use this card. Well, it's matchup dependent, right? So right now with the red decks being super popular, Writhing Necromask doesn't come in against those. I'm sorry, it's just how it is. Writhing Necromask is best against matchups like Fairies or the Cog Gate deck, both of which are relatively popular, but they don't appear in every single video. I don't board it in against the Demir Terror deck because they also have 5-5 five, five creatures, and I'm not looking to trade 5-5s. Five, five, so I want my payoffs to be a little bit more meaningful, so I don't board it in there. On top of that, they can just flashback a Chainer's Edict, that sort of thing. It's just not that effective. So I don't like Writhing Necromast there, but it is an option to come in against Graveyard Hate. Our sideboard is mostly ways of deciding how you want to be Graveyard Hate between Mirshall Crab, the Writhing Necromast, and Ingot Chewer, and then we have Pyroblast for blue decks, and then Flaring Pain to beat 
Prismatic Strands. It makes a lot of sense. Our deck is a graveyard combo deck. We want to protect our graveyard. So I played this list for a couple of leagues and really enjoyed it. But one thing that I found was that I was struggling a little bit. I kept on flooding out. And I wanted to perhaps fix that, but also make the red matchup a little bit better. I was going less than 50% against red with this list, so I wanted to change. And I this is the list we will be playing today. This is the list that I played last night. So last night, I ended up going 3-1 and one against red with this list. And that is because I cut the cyborg flaring pain for Dahada's ploy. So that was the big change in this list. We are back to playing... Uh, two copies of Dahada's Ploy in the 75, you board it in against Burn, and you get to do the thing. So having two ways to gain life was pretty meaningful, but we lost Flaring Pain. So how do we beat Prismatic Strands without Flaring Pain? This was a big concern of mine, especially because Prismatic Strands is now seen play in the blue deck. Well, against the blue deck, we're already boarding in Mirror Shell Crab. And you can board in Mirror Shell Crab against Boros if you want to as well, because it does hit Relics. Mirror Shell Crab is how we're going to beat Prismatic Strands. I've been doing it that way. It's been fine. I actually beat Coggate last night um, in a practice room game. It wasn't the league that I played, but I, did, I, I play sometimes in the practice room just because, like, I don't know. I don't have time for a full league. I recently had a child, so, you know, sometimes the practice room is where I play. But I played a couple games in there. I did beat uh, a Coggate player with her that was holding open prismatic strands and uh crab got the job done so that is what i'm going to be doing there another change is that you'll notice i actually went down a land this was not a, an accidental change like i said I, I found myself being a little bit flooded so what i did is i added in a fourth copy of architects of will this brings me up to 24 cyclers which is higher than i typically play so that way we can churn through our deck a little bit better get more consistent draws. I feel like sometimes there will be games where I, believe it or not, our deck is 25 creatures, 24 of them cycle. There will be games where I only draw two cyclers in the top third of my deck and it blows my mind. So hopefully this helps smooth out some of that by having an extra cycle or one less card that stops us. You might be saying, Bryant, why don't you just play cycling lands? That's another thing that people often suggest. Well, the thing is cycling lands come into play tapped and the, re the reward of playing them is pretty low. For here, Maestro's Theater, while it does come into play tapped, it provides mana fixing and a little bit of life gain to help those street rates go just a, a tiny bit further. So I've preferred Maestro's Theater for the color fixing. And also it's thinning. I think that's where you want to be. If you want to play Cycling Lands, live your best life. I'm not going to stop you. But uh, I think that this is just much, much better. Um, I did try one Mystical Teachings. I don't remember how many were in the last video. I didn't bother to check. But I was trying out one teachings for a while and i just found that the deck once again consistency issues you really need to be playing two teachings every time i go down to one i end up regretting it so uh we're back up to two two copies of tulare ones one to hottest ploy and then one repository scob i believe i've covered all of the changes in the deck list today so um I would just like to take a moment and thank everyone everyone for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, enjoy this, you know, the future of Cycle Storm because I think I'm going to be playing this list for a while. It's just really, really good in my testing. I don't plan on making any huge changes to this. I've just been loving the theater. Um, that's what I've got. So once again, thank you. It's the end of the month. So for those of you that liked the... Uh, watching videos early feature that I gave everyone this month for the month of December uh, for the $5 tier. If you still want to watch videos early, that's going to be going back to the $50 tier. I know that that's, you know, a pretty big price increase, but I have to reward the people that support this channel. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But if you want to consider doing that, I would greatly appreciate it. I spend 30, 40 hours a week on these YouTube videos for everyone on top of my full-time job. So it really does help. And then I would like to take a moment and thank you, thank our sponsor for the month, Eminence. Uh, Silicon Dynasty actually just sold out and they didn't provide me with any words that they wanted me to say for this video, but I'd like to give them a shout out anyway. They're just a great, great company providing the best CDH experience that exists out there. If you're interested in running a CDH tournament or even just an EDH tournament, they offer software Command Tower where it helps you run EDH events. Definitely go check that out at eminence.events. They all have tons of information there. There. but uh yeah that's what i've got thank you for watching and let's head on over to the first match don't go anywhere
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Match number one. We are on the play with Cycle Storm. Keep, 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 keep. Love it. All right. Looks like they've also kept their hand, but we will use the Maestro's Theater right away. Auto yield to both triggers and then grow grab a basic swamp. Pass the turn. Getting the swamp because we have the pair of Horror of the Broken Lands. I forgot to mention it in the deck tech, but I was testing Monstrous Carabid in this list instead of the Horror of the Broken Lands because it cycles off the mountain. What I found was that a number of matchups, I wanted the option to go beat down, and I just didn't have that because I boarded, uh, because I cut Horror of the Broken Lands. So it's tough because obviously cycling and the ease of cycling is very important, but I think more... More important than the ease of cycling is just having a, a deck with multiple points of action and having the decision or the choice of how to play it matters a lot. Uh, let's play the theater. I'm just going to go grab another swamp. We don't need the mountain quite yet. So that was a free street rate cycle due to the two life from Maestro's Theater. I'm going to cycle this again. Architects. I'm just going to be lazy and cycle on my main phase, try to save some time. One thing to note is that this deck can be pretty time intensive. So if you can, consider trying to save some time here or there. Yes, you can wait until your opponent's end step, but most decent opponents will know that Cycle Storm doesn't play main deck interaction. So who are you really trying to fool after you've already shown them that you're Cycle Storm? And I think if your point is, well, bad opponents might not know that, you should be beating bad opponents anyway. I'm not trying to beat the the bottom of the barrel. I, I should be able to just outplay them. They play Preordain. Is this Squadron Hawk? Okay. Sure. So they're playing the Archaeologist. We would love to find a Songs of the Damned and make this a pretty easy win. Okay. So Sacred Cat. They do have a Prismatic Strands that they're holding open. Kind of a pain in the butt. Because now we have to beat a main deck strands. Let's cycle the Street Wraith. Architects. Cycle that as well. Stinger. I'm going to go get a mountain now. Because I can play out the Stinger and try to convince them to Prismatic Strands in response. They play Seagate. And Squadron Hawk. Sure thing. So now they can get in for one. Hmm, actually, I'm wondering if I want to, because they do have removal in their deck. I think I'm actually supposed to just cycle the Stinger, because I would hate for it to get hit by um, Nowhere, whatever it's called, Journey to Nowhere, and then, like, not be able to dig for Songs of the Damned. I'm going to just pass here. I'm not really under any pressure to start winning now, so I'm just going to take my time. The Modern Age, sure thing. They discard a Sacred Cat, play a Citadel Gate. Interesting. They choose not to hold open Counterspell. So now they can attack for 2 while fall to 14 life, not the end of the world. On their end step, we will cast Dahada's Ploy to gain 1 life and draw 2 cards. There's the songs we've been looking for. I think I'm going to get rid of the Tularian Winds. I just don't think that it's really what I want right now. And then we can cycle the Stinger. Actually, do I want to cycle the Stinger? I can just play it out. Hmm. All right, I'm going to keep it because I might be able to trick them with the Prismatic Strands. The Ball Ritual. Let's play the Lotus Petal. Granite Stinger. Dark Ritual. All right, so they gave me a point. Now I can beat them with this Prismatic Strands on the stack. So we will sacrifice this. Fast Songs of the Damned. Ball Ritual. And I'm going to jumpstart the ploy here. Discarding the Repository Scob. Discard the Swamp. Cabal Ritual. 
And we're going to try to win now with this Prismatic Strands on the stack. Return nine creatures. Street rates first. We should have three street rates in here and then other creatures. Okay, cycle. And you want to cycle with all the, uh, the triggers on the stack in case you draw into Songs of the Damned. I know that it's not an intuitive thing, but if you draw into Songs of the Damned, you want the most number of creatures in your graveyard as possible. So that's why you do it this way. And we have three songs remaining in our deck. All right, so keep cycling. There we go. So I could cast it immediately. I think that's kind of a mistake because what we want to happen is we want to cycle into other cyclers. I want the Songs of the Damned to make the most mana possible. And I'm going to end up casting the Songs of the Damned when I am down to at least three mana. I think that they could have gotten me if they wanted to earlier, but I'm going to choose to play around Spell Pierce. It looks like I accidentally clicked on the same creature twice. My bad. Okay, keep cycling. Auto yield. Looks like this is another Fezzle. Yeah, I just clicked on this creature's wrong. So we'll cast songs here before the repository scob would return. And now we'll reaping the graves again. Start off on the street rates. But then everything else. And with 15 minutes on the clock, I'm actually just going to return everything. Uh, well, I'm sorry, 15 mana. Sorry, I'm trying to do too many things at once, and playing while you narrate isn't always the easiest thing. With 15 mana floating, I'm going to return everything. Because I'm, the Songs of the Dam making the most number possible isn't as relevant as speed at this point, because I just need to close out the game and win quickly. So that's what I'm going for now. Okay, just keep cycling. They're at 8, and we have 18 cards left in our deck, so we have no risk of accidentally decking ourselves. It is important to keep note how many cards are left in your library, because sometimes if you're not paying attention, you can accidentally deck yourself. Just keep cycling. When it's at 4 now, almost dead. Okay, almost there. Killing them with prismatic strands on the stack. You love to see it. And we did it. Nice strands. Cool. Going into the post board now, we definitely want the Pyroblast, the Mountain, Mirshell Crab, and this is a matchup where I like the Writhing Necromass. I'm going to board that in. It does help us beat Graveyard Hate. One thing I've been doing is I've just been boarding out all of the Cabal Rituals in, this, in these matchups where I try to bring in everything because you're sort of going for a hybrid plan and I'd rather not have a, a plant or a card that requires me to have seven cards in Graveyard when I'm trying to beat Graveyard Hate. So... I board that out. I do like boarding up to 12 lands in the control matchups. The hottest ploy isn't as relevant here, so I do side that out. That brings us down to 65. I like shaving on teachings. So they're a deck that boards in Pyroblast because they have lands where you can choose a color and then that land then taps for that color. But on top of that, so they have Pyroblast and Dispel. Do you really want to be playing a four mana card that just gets answered for one? I think it's kind of a trap. You can take out the Repository Scob and then you have to go down two more. I've been boarding down two Lotus Petals. I know that we're taking out a lot of combo pieces. I completely understand that. But you are you need to play slower and you need to play to the speed of the matchup. So I think it's really the best choice. And here we have a solid hand. I want to find land number two, but there's no way that I'm mulligan this. They play a turn one Seagate and they name white. Draw for turn. And once again, in order to save on time, I'm just going to cycle in my main phase. I don't want to time out. It's one of my biggest concerns when I play this deck. Because when sometimes when you're trying to beat Prismatic Strands, you do end up with really long convoluted turns. And I don't want to put myself in that position. The Modern Age, sure thing. They discard a Sacred Cat. We draw Pyroblast. We're looking for land number two here. We miss. Okay, I'm going to discard a Healer. They discard Prismatic Strands. Okay. Preordain. They put two on top of the Preordain. That's kind of scary. They play a Gate. Draw for turn. Still not the land I need. Cycle a Healer. Brutal. Okay. He did board up a land, but a little bit of bad luck here. What are you doing, opponent? Hard cast deep analysis. This seems like a great time to do it. Clearly, I'm struggling. They don't attack. We find the land. 
Let's go grab a mountain here. Pass the turn. I can cycle on the end step. I don't want to play further into Relic than I already have. Another Sacred Cat. Earth thing. So now they're getting in for three. Oh, they might not have. Okay, that wasn't an accidental non attack. They wanted to leave up Prismatic Strands. I wasn't thinking. That is a fine play by the opponent. Cycle Stinger on their end step. Okay, now we're hitting our lands. I like this. Pass the turn. And step brainstorm for the opponent. We're at 43 cards. So at our opponent's end step, we will cycle three times and we will be 33% of the way through our deck at this point. They find Basilisk Gate, so that's a real clock. Modern Age, sure thing. Discards another copy of Prismatic Strands. Okay. Interesting. So they're only leaving up one copy of Strands at the moment. They're paying life here. Is this a flash? Oh. Well, looks like they were thinking about flashing back the Deep Analysis and then decided against it. Cycle the Vantasaur. There's a Necromass. Cycle the Horror of the Broken Lands. Okay. We're still lacking, like, ways to go off. Like, Necromass is fine, but... I don't know. It's... We don't really have Songs of the Damned or Reaping the Graves or anything else going for us. I'm going to play a 5-5, see if they try to counter it. It looks like they do. I'm going to let that happen. Cycle Architect, see if we can hit land 4. No such luck. Pass the turn. Actually, I'm going to cycle on my main phase. I don't think I need a hold open Pyroblast on their turn. Okay, so the reason I wanted to cycle main phase is if I hit another Maestro's Theater, I want to be able to use it. So that was why I decided to cycle main phase. We're over 33% of the way through our deck at this point, but we have still not found any action. They discard a Brainstorm, keeping four cards in hand. Preordain. We need both Songs of the Damned, and we need um, Reaping the Grave. So I, I feel like we're still kind of far away. With our opponent consistently hitting land drops here, uh, the Prismatic Strands represents a problem. Now they're getting in for seven. Yeah, I mean, it's time for me to go. Draw. Their songs. Dark Ritual. Cycle the Architects. Go to six. Cycle Street Wraith. And we never found uh, Reaping the Graves. I guess I could try to blast the Vector Glider. Play Necromass. Blast the Glider. I'm not going to show them Mirror Shell Crab if I don't have to. All right, so they're going to Red Blast this. I'm going to choose to lose the game. So I don't think I'm likely to win this anyway. And by continuing to play the game and show them the Mirror Shell Crab, because I could Dark Ritual Crab, they then know about crab for game three when I'm trying to beat prismatic strands, and I don't want to be put in that spot. So, uh, yeah, that game just did not go super well. And they now know that I boarded in Necromass. I think I'm going to change that plan. I mean, I do like it. It's really good at being prismatic strands, but... So if I board that out, I could board in two pedal, two teachings, and... You know, I'm going to keep on this plan. I think I just drew them too late. Stick with the game plan. On the play. Yep, keep. 15 minutes is plenty of time for a game three, so I'm probably going to play a little bit more conservatively now. I will cycle on their end step, all that good stuff. One is elected to keep seven. We will play the Swamp. Pass. They play a Seagate. Cycle the Architects on their end step. Untap, take a draw. Reaping the Graves, beautiful. Cycle the Healer. We found land number two, wonderful. Pass the turn. This is looking like a pretty good draw for us at the moment. Basilis Gate. The Modern Age, you've got it. They discard Deep Analysis, we'll cycle the Dinosaur. We hit Maestro's Theater. Alright, let's use the Theater. Auto Yield to both. Grab a mountain. Pass the turn. One thing to note about the Meister's Theater is you can see the mana consistency already in this first match. Not being stuck with colorless lands is so huge. 
They brainstorm. Maybe looking for land number three here. They could have flashed back deep analysis and decided against it. Oh, that was an upkeep brainstorm. That's weird. That was very strange. They might not have noticed. They discard a sacred cat. Quadrant Hawk. So this can bring them up to eight cards in hand. And with this, they could discard a uh, Prismatic Strands if they choose to get all three Hawks. They do get three Hawks. And now they're going to clean up and they discard a... Oh! I didn't cycle on their end step. I just wasted... Uh, damn. That hurts. All right, we'll cycle now. Cycle the healer. Play out Lotus Petal. I think we're going to end up going for it here. I'm going to burn a songs so I can keep my colors open. Cycle a stinger. Another songs. All right, I'm going to cast this songs and then hold priority. So we're returning five here. So the idea is that by the time this other songs resolves, it will have made more than six mana. That's the goal. All right, we go to 17. That was, ugh, I can't believe I accidentally didn't cycle on the end step. Just dumb. Okay, keep cycling. Uh, running out of gas here. We need another Reaping the Graves. Cycle. That's another Stinger. Um, let's cycle again. All right, so this song makes nine mana. I'm going to once again choose to keep my colors open. Come on, another Reaping, please. Here shall Crab. Cycle a Stinger. That's a bummer. Okay, then. Uh, well, I can, in theory, hard cast my crab here and hope that it's good enough to win. But I don't think that's a reasonable line. Maybe that's what we're doing. All right. Hard cast mirror shell crab. Go. See if I can draw into some... Uh, what is it called? Writhing Necromast to back up the crab. Because we know that our opponent just tutored up a bunch of Squadron Hawks. They play another gate, so they can turn this into a 4-4, so they can race me here. We're going to blast this. And now they can bring back Sacred Cat. So they have plenty of blockers. We'll go down to 12. Draw for turn. It's another land. Wonderful. Go grab another island, I suppose. Maybe it's supposed to be... It doesn't matter. Get in. They just take it. Maybe they're trying to pump up the Sacred Cat token. Preordain, I'm not going to counter that. Another copy of the Modern Age. That's fine. I'm trying to save damage by killing the Vector Glider. So they have another Sacred Cat and another Gate. Alright, let's kill the Vector Glider. And I'll take two down to 11. Reaping the Graves. I think we might want to play this on the opponent's turn. So that way I can return more creatures. Get in there. They are at 11. Pass the turn. They discard a blue blast. They flash back deep analysis. I'm going to attempt to counter this. Okay. They play a land. Squadron Hawk, Storm is three. We do know that they have at least two more Hawks in their hand as well. So they're attacking for three. I'm going to go down to eight and they're going to go up to ten. Okay, so this is a reaping for four. I want to, so they discarded a blue blast and then didn't counter my pyroblast. So I'm going to return a pair of stingers. And then healer architects. I don't think I'm supposed to cycle on their end step here. And tap, take a draw. Let's attack with the mirror shell crab. Ah, yeah. They do block. Not too surprised by that. Let's play a stinger. Do you have a counter spell in hand? They didn't fight over the deep analysis. They do counter spell. Now we'll play out the other stinger. And now we have to try to cycle kill them in time. Cycle the horror of the broken lands. They're going to go down to nine. Another theater. Cycle the architects. We have one basic left in the deck. Dark Ritual, Cycle the Healer. 
This puts them to seven. Pass the turn. They have four gates, so they can make a creature have five power. And I'm pretty far away from being able to deal lethal next turn. Yeah, they're going to gain five. So I don't think I'm realistically going to win this. And I go to two, so that means I have to play the theater to be able to cycle the Street Wraith. I think they got me. Draw for turn. Necromass is not good enough at this point. All right, so we'll start off by playing the theater, going up to three. We needed to draw the Necromasses way earlier in this game. Go to one. Draw off the Street Wraith cycle. So there's still life. Uh, let's Dark Ritual, I guess. Cycle Stinger, and I think we're just hoping to hit Reaping the Graves, even if it's only for three. Draw. It's chance, there's still a chance. They're tapping for mana. This is a Prismatic Strands. We can't beat a Strands here. It is, in fact, a Prismatic Strands. Yep. So they got me. We drew another crab. It was way too late. Um, yeah. So we are 0 and 1. I mean, that was a pretty exciting match. You only look at this and say, the beatdown plan didn't work. Maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the matchup. But I think the real problem is that we just found it way too late. It's turn 8. We've seen two-thirds of our deck before we hit a Writhing Necromass. Like, sometimes you just don't draw that well. And, I mean, we boarded up to 12 lands, but we had all eight lands that tap for play on the table. Uh, we used three Maestro's Theater, so there's only one land left in the deck, which is the fourth copy of Theater. I mean, it's tough because obviously I want to win every match that I can, but I think we did what we could with the resources we had. I wouldn't change how I boarded for this match. I think we had the correct game plan. It just didn't work out. So we're zero and one, which is a bummer, but I'm going to keep my head up and just look to win the remaining four matches. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, this time we're on the draw. I mean, two lands, five cyclers, that's what we want. So keep opponent with a mulligan. They actually went down to five. We're now in their main phase, island. A hand of five cyclers actually ends up being better in the blue matchup. So big fan. We draw cycler number six. We will auto yield to these triggers. One, two, and then go grab our own copy of island. Pass. I personally love my beautiful Invasion Basics. Invasion was the set that I started on, and I've used these lands pretty much my entire life. Looks like we're facing the Demir Terror deck. We will pass back. Mental note, they had a Snuff Out and a Preordain. I have to imagine they're pretty happy about milling the Snuff Out there. Another Mental note, Augur Bolas Spell Pier. They have four cards in hand. Cycle Architects. Galarian wins. I am not against just casting that and trying to exchange my entire hand all at once. We need an opening, though. Maybe that changes with Drawing Song. Let's try to hit land three here. There it is, another theater. Beautiful. We're going to go up to 22 life, and I'm actually going to grab the other island. It might seem weird to you that I'm choosing to select the second island over another copy of Swamp, but we still have three swamps in the deck, so I'm more likely to draw into a swamp. They mill over a Grimag Angler this time, and a Tularian Terror. No graveyard synergies quite yet. They have five cards in hand, now four. It looks like they will now be casting a Grimag. There it is. Three cards remain in hand. On their end step, let's cycle Vantasaur. Land number four is not bad. I think we're just going to pass here. I might try to draw out a counterspell on their end step with Tolarian Winds. 
it's very important that we win game number one. I would like to say that. Uh, they mill deep analysis and another terror. So the reason it's so important to win game number one is that in, in the post board games, they have three, sometimes even four copies of Nile Spell Bomb. And it's tough to beat Nile Spell Bomb and everything else they have going on. I'm going to let the deep analysis resolve. They play an Aquifier. So now they have Counterspell open, but not much else. We go to 17. I mean, they do have Snuff Out available, technically. Let's cycle the Stinger. All right, we will no longer be casting this Talarian win. Cycle. Another Theater. Take a draw. Horror of the Broken Lands. Start off by casting Lotus Petal. Songs of the Damned. Let's see if this resolves. If they counterspell it, we can Repository Scobbing two songs again. Beautiful. All right, let's cycle. Go to 15, cycle Street Wraith. Dark Ritual. I'm going to cast Hilarion Winds and then Reaping the Graves. This will return five. They might counterspell the uh, the Chalarian Winds. If they do, it's not the end of the world. Okay, they're definitely posturing like they have counterspell in hand. They're taking a long time to think about things. Chalarian Winds, does this resolve? Apparently it does. Lovely. All right, cycle. Another Reaping. Let's cycle this going down to 11. Another Lotus Petal, cycle the Horror of the Broken Lands. How about a Cabal Ritual? Cycle Healer, Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, Cycle Stinger, Cycle Imposing Vantasaur, Architect. So my fear here is that if I draw another Songs of the Dam, they're likely to counter it. I mean, I have to try. Wow, they let that resolve, so you just have nothing? Okay, so this is from 10. Return both copies of Stinger. And then we're going for it, so we're going to return all three Street Wraiths. And then we can just return other creatures. If they do have a counter spell, we'll, we'll probably see one here. Because I'm going to try to play out the Stingers and attempt to win this game. Red, play out a Stinger. And there's the counter spell. They should have counterspelled the Songs of the Dam. They might not be familiar with the matchup. Cycle of Horror of the Broken Lands. Okay, so it's our time to party. Snuff Out is still a card to be concerned with. They did not attempt to snuff out there. Well, let's try playing another Stinger. Brings us down to nine mana floating. Cycle, cycle. They're at 12 now. I love this deck so much. It's just so much fun to play. I love how every like intricate decision matters so much. Dark Ritual. Cycle of Street Wraith. This brings us down to nine life. And they conceded. Okay, sweet. Going to the next one. So this is not a matchup that I board in Necromass. I talked about that in the deck tech, but I just want to make sure that's clear. It is a matchup where I do want Pyroblast and Mirror Crab. You could board an Ingature here. I don't have any experience siding it in in this matchup, so I can't tell you if it's right or wrong. I haven't really tried it. But for right now, I'm going to just focus on the, the main board plan and see how that goes. So we're going to board out the Tolarian Winds. I just don't think it's what we want in this matchup. Board out the Dehada's Ploy. That brings us down to 64. Repository Scob can be a little bit risky against the Snuff Out deck, so I don't know how I feel about that. Teachings can get hit by Dispel or Spell Pierce, but they don't have Blast, so I'm not against keeping it in. I do think we can shave at least one copy of Lotus Petal because we're boarding in a land. Maybe board out one copy of Teachings, one Cabal Ritual, and then an additional Cycler. You know what? I'm going to board out the Scob and keep the extra Cycler. I just don't want Scob in the Snuff Out matchup, I think. Game two, and we've opened up a reasonable hand. We do need to find uh, a Maestro's Theater or Swamp to cycle the Horror of the Broken Lands, but there's no chance I ship this. Play the Mountain and pass the turn on their end step, we'll cycle the Stinger. There's their Spell Bomb. I wonder if I'm supposed to try to just play out Stingers then. Try it. Try winning the old-fashioned way. 
I have to imagine they have blue blast and snuff outs in their deck, so this probably isn't going to go very far. Thought scour. Mental note. Land for turn. So now they have counter spell open. We'll attack for two. Aya. This brings them to 18. Cycle Street Wraith in the second main. We're looking for land number two here. Draw. No such luck. I'm going to cycle a stinger. They're at 16. Pass. Another mental note. Mills a Gurmag Angler and a Preordain. So of their eight win conditions, they've milled two so far. You might be thinking this mountain looks really awkward with the, your hand because if these were uh, monstrous carabids, I could in theory cycle them. We actually haven't run out of the cycler issue yet. So I don't know how relevant that is that we can't cycle these off the mountain. But also this could have been the mountain that was a lotus petal. So it's not this it's not necessarily mountain's fault. They have hydroblast. Not too surprised by that. I did mention it. They have four in hand now into a terror i'm probably not winning this one theater okay grab our swamp pass the turn aquafire and they have three in hand i'm gonna fall to 14. cycle the vantasaur another songs whoops clicked on the wrong one there come on cycle architects and Vantasaur, Lotus Petal. Pass the turn after that. They play another land and other attacking. Still three cards in hand. I'm at nine. The Ball Ritual. Let's attempt to cast it. They dispel me. Okay, pass the turn. They have two in hand. This brings me to four. Draw and it's a theater, so that will not bring me to a total that's high enough to buy another turn. So I'm going to cast Songs of the Damned. We would need their hand to not interact with us here. Sacrifice this, cast another Songs. They brainstorm in response. Songs of the Damned? All right, they got me. We can go to game three. We could try to board an Ingature. I just. It's tough because you don't want to overboard, and then what if they don't have it? Try boarding out the teachings, I guess. We did see Dispel. Maybe board out, like, one Architects. So then we have four answers to it. Like, this is just a tough matchup. On the play for game three. Sure. Swamp Pass. We play an Aquafire, cycle the Imposing Vantasaur, Stinger. All right, let's get this onto the table. I think we want to try being the beatdown deck. Next turn, my plan is to accelerate into Horror of the Broken Lands. Island, Spell Bomb. Yep. Draw for turn. Attack with the Stinger. So they're going to fall to 18. Let's see if they're smart enough to try to counter this Dark Ritual. And Horror of the Broken Lands. Monstrous Carabid would be a juicy blue blast target here where horror allows us to pivot. They milled two lands. That was very good for them. They mental note again. Deep analysis and terror. I believe they could play a Gurmag Angler here if they so choose. And they do. Cycler. So how risky am I? Because if I attack and I don't draw into another Cycler, we're in a bad spot. I think I have to make them, uh, I don't know. I think this is the play I need to make. They do block. Come on, deck, please. Cycle. Come on, deck, please give me a cycler. Draw. Oh, no. They have the spell bomb. I'm going to dark ritual. They're f 6 I can't believe this. Oh, they're not f 6 You have to spell bomb here. Yeah, I, I guess I bought into the auto yield on the, the cycle there. That's a bummer. We're pretty far behind now. So we trade with their thing. We got the spell bomb off the board, but we have nothing going on for us. We have two cards in hand, so they're now seven after their draw step. And neither of our cards cycle. 
I really needed a hit. Like, if I had a cycler there, I think there's a good chance we win this game. They brainstorm into Thought Scour. They got rid of a Gurmag Angler. That's a little surprising. Get in there. Play another Stinger. So you might be saying, why not cycle the Stinger? Which is a fair question. I think one of the few ways that I win this game is if I'm lucky enough to chain cyclers with these Stingers. Preordain. They have five in hand. They put zero to the top, two to the bottom. There's a terror. And another terror, so I would have to get incredibly lucky now. Draw. That's a bummer. Yeah, I missed my window. I'm going to go to 10. And another Gurmag. Rough. They still have three cards in hand as well, so they likely have some sort of counter spell. We didn't draw another Cycler. Wow. This has been a brutal league so far. I've been loving this deck list, but the second I hit record, it hasn't been going too well. Let's just focus on winning the last three. I know it's a, a tough start, but I promise you, I do believe in this deck list. I could 0-5. I'm being completely serious with you. I could 0-5, and I would run this same exact list back in a challenge tomorrow, in a Grand Prix tomorrow. I really love this deck list, and I, I'm, I'm, this isn't me being blind. It's I'm not letting a small sample sizes sample size of two matches get to me. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make here. But uh, on to the next, Grow and Two. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Let's get this one. Match number three on the play. Keep. Lead off on a Maestro's Theater. Triggers. Go grab an island. Pass. Uh, some sort of black deck. So there are Orzov. Okay, so... One of the keys to this matchup is trying to play around main deck copies of Bazooka Bog. Gate. All right, so it's not exactly the deck I thought it was, but I still think that we should keep Bazooka Bog in the back of our head. Cycle the Architects. Again, cycle, cycle. And another copy of Maestro's Theater. That's a good one. Let's go grab another Swamp. Pass the turn. Another Swamp for them. Cauldron Familiar. Okay. We are both at 21 now. On their end step, let's cycle Architects number 3. Street Wraith. Cycle the Horror of the Broken Land. We are looking for a Reaping the Graves at this point. Dark Ritual. Okay, I'm going to just try to find it. Cycle, cycle. Ding. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Cycle. Cycle. Cabal Ritual. Let's ploy for Storm Count. Discard the Teachings? Yeah, I think it's the Teaching. Lotus Petal. Songs of the Dam for Storm and Reaping the Graves. Street Rates first, and then everything else. All right, so we've returned the pair of street rates. Let's cycle these real quick. Another Songs of the Damned is certainly welcome. We have a Teachings in the Graveyard that can go get a Reaping the Graves if we need it to. Cycle. And a Reaping. Okay, so we're just pretty well set to win this. Dark Ritual. Cycle again. Valerian wins. Cycle. Cycle. Another wins. Return this horror of the broken land. Cycle that. Lotus petal. Songs of the damned. Songs of the damned. Blue. We're gonna hold priority. Put Tularian wins on the stack, and then reaping the graves. And this will give us thirteen cards, fourteen with the Tularian wins in our hand to draw all at once. So this pretty much just saves us a bunch of mana that we don't have to spend on cycling creatures. 
Okay, so we're returning everything and then discarding two Tolarian wins. Okay. Drop 13. Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. Lotus Petal. Play a Stinger. And now we start to try to win the game. Cycle. No removal spell, not yet at least. Draw. Cycle again. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Cycle the Architects. Come to cast Cabal Ritual. That was apparently good. Cycle. We're at 15. Let's play out another copy of Stinger. Cycle Street Wraith. Down to 14 life. Now we'll return our graveyard and uh, finish winning. Reaping the graves on the stack, storm trigger, and then selecting. They decide to concede. I love it. All right, game number two. I believe that this is a matchup that we want to bring in and get to her for Nile Spell Bombs. We don't. We obviously don't need Pyroblast. You could board in the Mirror Shell Crabs, but I think you just want to focus on beating the obvious cards. So we're going to board in and get to her. I think we probably want the second mountain. What I've been doing is when I want to keep all of my Lotus Petals, I end up boarding out a Swamp. We do have Maestro's Theater, we have Swamps, we have four Petals. I think it's important to keep speed up, but also, like, we have plenty of Black Sources, I think we'll be fine. So then we have to find three cards to set up for the Ingot Chewers. I don't mind boarding out Tolarian Wins in post board games when we're trying to be a little bit more conservative and not lose to um, their Cyborg, or their Graveyard Hate. And then the you you can board out, you have a choice on the final card. It can be either Cabal Ritual number three or the second copy of Teachings. I think both are reasonable, but I'm going to board out the third copy of Cabal Ritual. Once again, just trying to make sure I don't lose the Graveyard Hate. And having the Teachings can be pretty helpful as well for consistency purposes. They took a mulligan, we will keep. All right, they play another gate. Swamp, pass the turn. Two mana for a Nicker Wellspring. Sure thing. Cycle, cycle. We draw a Street Wraith. They draw off the Nicker Wellspring. We take our turn. The hottest ploy. Play land pass. Reckoner's Bargain. Okay. A different swamp and a Blood Fountain. I think we're going to cycle. Still a little bit worried about Bajooka Bog, but I mean, we have to advance our game plan. We have three creatures in the graveyard. I'm going to play the Swamp here because it allows me to Dahada's play on the run step. You could play the theater, but I don't want to take a turn off to search out a land. No Bajooka Bog. Instead, they play a Heap Gate. Dawnbringer Cleric. So this means that they're likely an Ephemerate deck too. They remove Imposing Vantasaur. Another copy of uh, Icar Wellspring. That's fine. So at this point, we're really just looking for Reaping the Graves, and I'm kind of glad that I left in my uh, my two copies of Teachings. We found the Reaping. Discard the Maestro's Theater. And I think we're going to try to party here. Cycle the Street Wraith. That is five cards in Graveyard. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Sacrifice for Red. And... Red. So now we can play Cabal Ritual for Threshold. Cycle. Ingot Chewer. I could play that for Storm. Cycle Street Wraith. Dark Ritual. Cycle the Stinger. Other songs. So I guess here by playing this Stinger, or by playing the Chewer, I get a Storm, but I also get two black mana. I could also just jumpstart the ploy. Maybe that's the move. Discard the Ingot Chewer. Goodbye, Lotus Petal. Songs of the Damned. And then on this songs, we're going to do the trick that I did earlier, where I hold priority and then return creatures. We're going to make the songs make more than 8 mana. Reaping the Graves. Street Wraiths first. And I'm going to leave the Ingot Chewer in there. Cycle. Dark Ritual. Cycle again. Another ingot chewer. Cycle. Dark ritual increasing that storm count. Cycle horror of the broken lands. Imposing Vantasaur. All ritual. Cycle the architects. 
healer. There is a teaching. It's no blue mana. And then this is the stinger. So right now it would have made one more mana. Two after the cycle. And now we got a free dark ritual out of it. And then the other teaching. So a little bit awkward because we don't have blue open. But we do get to make 11 mana instead of 8. Which is a free uh, reaping the graves here. Reaping again. We're going to leave the ingot chewer. And now we're going to return everyone, because my game plan here is I'm going to start playing out the Stinger and just try to win the game. If we draw any more Stingers, we can play them out. So previously, you could wait until the very last second and play out all your Stingers and not worry about it. When you don't have um, Blood Celebrant in your deck, you do have to change your play patterns. And I think that's something that's not always recognized is it's not just free to play the same way that you've been playing this entire time. You have to be able to make adjustments based on your deck list. Okay, cycle, cycle. Cycle the Street Wraith. Another healer, cycle Street Wraith. There's another Stinger, so we'll play that out. Going down to nine mana. Now I recycle deals two. Cycle of Vantasaur. I think we're going to be on our way to our first match win in just a moment. That's the final copy of Ingot Chewer. And another Stinger. They're at 13. I have three Cyclers. Yeah, I'll play it out. Cycle a Healer. Auto Yield. Cycle a Healer. Architects. We need to hit one Cycler off our next two draws. All right, I guess it's all down to this uh, Dranit Stinger. Cycle, cycle, they're at one. And Street Wreath will do it. It's worth noting, I have a pair of Maestro's Theaters in my hand right here. The, if these were Ash Barons, in theory, these could have won the game instead of needing to draw into the Street Wraith. We ended up winning anyway, but in general, I value the Maestro's Theaters over being able to cycle to win the game. Like, this feels like such a corner case sort of thing, but uh, we ended up getting there. We're not one and two, two matches left. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, we're on the draw keep. I am loving this Maestro's Theater. I know, like, it might not seem obvious, but when you analyze hands like this, and our opponent might be on Ponza here, uh, I don't have to take it. So typically you would, I guess here it might actually be similar. I might be lying to you um, because like you'd have to play Island and then cycle on the end step on tap. I guess it's similar. Maybe I'm just wrong. Ignore me. We are facing Ponza though. Pretty scary. Utopia Sprawl. Another Reaping. I don't need that. That's the turn. So this represents six mana here. Now they have seven mana. They chose white. So it looks like they're on initiative maybe and not Ponza. Maybe I should have checked the color of the Utopia Sprawl a, a little bit quicker. Six mana. I'd rather face initiative any day than face Ponza. You can have the initiative. I don't care about your three decks. Goliath Paladin. They're venturing into the Undercity. Okay, now their end step, we will cycle Imposing Vantasaur and the Horror of the Broken Land. Untap, draw. We did not hit a land. I'm going to go to 19 and cycle the Street Wraith. This Talarian Winds doesn't actually help that much just because I can't afford to discard Triple Reaping. Cycle the Architects into Reaping number four. Wow, this is awkward. Um... I think we just have to discard the Telerian Winds. I am not against, if our opponent plays a couple spells here, using Dark Ritual into Reaping the Graves to get a little bit of value and try to set up for the following turn. Ooh. Wow. That is brutal. Uh, we'll float a block. So they do have LD in their deck. And there's the red. Okay, so they're actually Naya. Land of War Visionary. All right, so now I need to pass the Dark Ritual. Then I'm going to Cabal Ritual as well. So now I'm going to have an extra Storm, but I'll be able to cycle 
my creatures so I can try to find another black source to win this. Okay, so we'll be able to cycle all four creatures that we're returning here. Let's cycle the Street Wraith. Cycle Horror. Teaching. Cycle the Horror again. Uh, yikes. So I could Songs here to keep cycling. And if that was the case, I should have cycled one by one. So that way I wouldn't have extra creatures in my hand. I think I'm just going to cycle. Because I need Storm Count on my turn if I'm going to win anyway. We found Lotus Petal. Wonderful. So now we take five. We're going down to 12. Next turn, they have seven, eight damage on the board, so they're representing lethal. These Lotus Petals are very welcome. Okay, let's cycle the Architects. This way, the Songs makes an extra mana. All right, so Songs makes five. Now we will cycle the Horror of the Broken Lands. So I could choose the Teachings for another Songs here. And then songs would make six mana. So I gain one mana by doing this. I'm going to try to get a little bit lucky here and just cycle and hope to add a ritual. Come on, duck. So I have four mana. That's actually not enough. So now I need to cycle into something better. Dark ritual would do it. Cabal ritual would do it. Not looking so good. Cycle. Uh, that's actually not enough. So now we're in a really tough spot because now I have to cast Reaping the Graves, returning our solo Street Wraith and hope to spike. Okay. Cycle Street Wraith. Come on, Songs of the Damned. No dice. All right, we lost. I don't know if I could have played that one any better. Like, you could have cast Songs on their turn, but then you untap and have, like, nothing really going on for you. So I don't know if that... Like, look at this. There's no way that we would have been able to go off this turn. Okay. And I don't like the idea of burning a Mystical Teachings to make one mana for a Songs of the Dam. That doesn't feel like a winning strategy to me. We're going to board out the Tolarian Winds. Once again, we're going to board in Ingot Chewers. Just make sure I don't lose the Relic. And then we have to board out one more. In a speed-based matchup, I think I want to keep my Cabal Rituals in. Board out Architects. Let's try this. On the play. Obviously can't keep that. This is a weird one. This is better than five. I think I'm going to keep this, but I don't love it. I'm going to bottom a Lotus Petal here. Play Island and pass. Like I could see myself e easily losing this game, but I don't know how often five is better. Right, so the one upside of this hand is that if they are on the land destruction plan, I can sit on Lotus Petals for a while. Use the theater. This was a decent draw because now I can go grab a swamp to cycle the horror. Save some time and just cycle this in my main phase. Pass. They play another Snow Cupboard, Utopia Sprawl. They choose red this time. Four mana. Land of War Visionary. But not a land destruction spell. Big fan of that. Take a draw, teachings, cycle, and we awkwardly have to pass. They use Arbor Elf to make some mana, five mana. Jewel Thief, okay. They have four cards remaining in hand. Now they can make five mana. Now they play the Goliath Paladin, sure. So they venture into the Undercity. They grab a forest and play it. They still have three in hand. They play another copy of Arbor Elf, two in hand now. Now they can attack for two with the Visionary. We have three creatures in the graveyard. We're a little bit light at the moment. Let's play the theater. Go grab another swamp. Cycle the horror. I'm just going to pass. I can cycle Stray Wreath on their end step. They don't need to know my life total. And what I mean by that is they don't need to know that I can that I want to go to 18 or possibly even 16 with the Reaping the Graves. Another copy of Jewel Thief, still two cards in hand. They play a land, one card now. They're getting in, so we're going to take a bunch of damage and then try to win on our turn. They do have a treasure available, so if their last card in hand is like a Pyroblast, that's a little weird. Cycle the Street Wreath down to five. Dark Ritual. Take a draw. Play the Dark Ritual. That was an F6. Cabal Ritual. 
Cycle Stinger. Do it under three. So this means I cannot double cycle street rates on the returning of Reaping the Graves. We'll cast Teachings. Go get a Songs of the Damned. Make seven mana. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Reaping for eight. Not really sure what my plan is here. I don't think I'm allowed to play out Stingers because I don't have enough resources in order to win. So I can return one Street Wraith first and then the other creatures and we can put the other Street Wraith at the bottom. So this puts me to one. And I cannot cycle this unless we hit the Dahada's ploy. Hmm. Actually, hold on. I might play out a healer. All right, so the final copy resolves. Let's sacrifice this for a white. Because this will effectively give me two more cycles by playing this out. So I'll gain a life up to two. Cycle. I'm going to hold that for now. Cycle. Another healer. I don't think I'm supposed to play that out. Let's cycle this. It's effectively one life to cycle. A Cabal Ritual. Go down to two. Okay, we're in decent shape now. Play the Cabal Ritual. Because we still have the teachings in the graveyard for another copy of Reaping the Graves. Cycle this. I go up to free life. Cycle again. Just keep cycling. Another teachings that was decent. I don't want to like pretend it's nuts because if I use the Lotus Petal, we only have a couple more red sources left in the deck. But it is more mana efficient. All right, cycle the architects. I'm at seven life now. Cycle again. Keep cycling. 27 cards left. Cycle the architects. And now I'll have to cast the songs because we only have one mana left. Theater. So songs makes 15. I think I'm going to use the teachings to go get Reaping the Graves here. The, the one from hand, that is. Because it gives me more mana floating. Actually, should I just flash back? This makes 15. Yeah, I should be flashing this back. Who am I kidding? Okay, so we'll grab this, cast it. I think I'm not going to flash back the other one. Okay. So let's return everything. And I'm not going to cycle in between because my game plan is to just cycle a few times. Or actually, hold on. Technically, there's a better way of doing this. Let's finish clicking here. So I'm supposed to cycle until I hit a red source, because if I hit a Songs of the Dam first, then it's better to cast it than just return. But it's either red source first or songs first. Dark Ritual, Cycle. Um, I actually want to keep... Okay, there's a Stinger down there, so I can cycle this one. Cycle the Street Wraith, I essentially go back down to 10. Boy, doesn't really matter. Cycle. And get sure. Cycle. And pretty low. Cycle. All right. So now we just return everything else. I did not hit the songs in time. Play the mountain for turn. And now we play the stinger. Cycle. And now when you have two creatures in play, you do have to click on which one you want to happen first, which is a little bit annoying because it eats up clock. Draw. And we drew a Lotus Petal, but I don't have another Stinger at the moment. Another Ingot Chewer, Cycle. 14 minutes left on Clock. Dark Ritual. Play out the Petal, I guess. Cycle. There's There should be another Reaping the Graves in the deck and another Songs that we're drawing towards. Up to 13 life. At one point this game, we had one life. This healer is doing work. Click. There it is. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to just return some stuff now. Because there's still another game. Returning everyone as quickly as I can. All right, the final copies are resolving. They're at 14. Sacrifice the Lotus Petal. Play out a Stinger. Cycle. Thought I'd yield to this. Cycle again. When you have multiple uh, of stingers, it's always better to click on the healer first because it's one less click you have to make in the long run. Okay, so we're doing okay. It looks like we're going to finish this game with like 11 minutes on clock. We should be fine. 
All right, so this will put them to two, and then we need one more cycle here. And that'll do. So now we're heading to game number three. You could board out the ingot chewers, but these decks do play like two relics in the board, and I'd rather just be prepared. Resubmit. Maybe I'm not supposed to board out the land. Let's bring that back in, and let's take out the... Oh, it's not going to let me. Ah! Oh, too fast. I was too fast to click submit. Now I'm going to be punished. This is a really weird hand. So, yes, we have Ingot Chewer, but I'd have to use the theater for red, and then I can't cast anything else. Like, it's just kind of a trap hand. And this is so much better. Keep. We're going to get rid of a theater. Forest. Into the Relic. You're probably laughing at me right now. I still don't think we're supposed to... Um keep that for seven i really do think it's a pretty big trap we're gonna go grab the mountain here and we can always play out the stinger okay land number two sort of a slow start for our opponent play out stinger i am the beat down land number three utopia sprawl they choose red jewel thief okay he gives them a treasure so they can activate the relic. I think I'm just going to pass here. On their end step, we can cast Ploy Digging for Ingot Chewer. Five mana. Boarding Party, six mana. They use the, the treasure token. They reveal Utopia Sprawl. Okay. The downside is they have a very fast clock at the moment. We're going to take nine. So this is a spot for us to try to win. I just don't know if we're going to be able to. Ploy. Discard the Architects. And we'll remove the Ploy. Okay, remove the Ploy. Come on, Doc. Did not need another land. Cycle. Need to get lucky here. Not need an Ingot Chewer. Cycle. Cycle. This Cabal Ritual is not even that good. Not sure what to do here. Try to cycle into Lotus Petal, I think. That's like the best thing we can do. Cycle. Yeah, that's awkward. All right, so we're going to play the Ingot Chewer and then blow up the Relic. And then we have to hope to be able to block and live. So the reason I say hope to be able to block and live is that our opponent could play another boarding party and we'd be dead. Or they could blow up my Swamp. Awkward. Yep. Damn. I jinxed it. I shouldn't have talked about it, clearly. Um, I also should have thought more about my boarding and potentially left in uh, the other swamp. I don't know what I was thinking. We should have 12 lands in Urdok versus the Ponza deck. Come on, Lotus Petal, please. Maestro's Theater? Notably worse than Ash Baron's here, uh, for what it's worth. I'm not saying we would have won but we could have done something. It would have been difficult being at four life and we have triple street wraith in the graveyard, but we could have cycled at least once. I still think Maestro's Theater is better, but we're one in three, not the best record. I'm not going to let that bother me. I still love this deck list. So let's just try to win match number five. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match, we are on the draw. I will keep this. So... With a hand with one cycler like this, obviously you're looking for more cyclers, but we can use Reaping the Graves as a value card. Ooh, not the matchup for this game plan. This might be a tough game for us. We draw a card that's pretty much unusable. Okay, so we could try to dump our entire hand to Tolarian Wind. It's tough because there's only two Reaping the Graves left in the deck, but... In a matchup where you need to be fast, we might not have a choice. Okay, it's sort of a slow start for our opponent here. And okay, maybe we can try to hit a few more. No cycler. I think I'm actually going to Tolarian win. I can't afford to sit around and wait for cyclers. 
So we'd have Q Reaping the Graves and a Repository Scob. Reckless Impulse. They have the land. So they can play Impulse here. Really, really slow start for them, though. Land Bolt. People are going to be so mad at me when I do this, but I'm discarding Double Reaping the Graves here. Okay. Still, it would have been pretty far in our deck before we even hit more creatures. Street Wraith, Cycle the Healer. Cycle Architects. Cycle Street Wraith. Do we get land three? We do not. Pass. We're at 17. They don't have any creatures in play, but they do have land bolt and exile. So they effectively have six cards between the bolt and exile and their cards in hand. Another mountain. They sacrifice the implementation. I go to 16. I have to imagine they're going to bolt me here. I'm at 13 and they have five in hand. Epicure. I mean, it's probably our go turn. We'll go to 10. Too late, theater. Too late. Can't afford to play you now. Cycle. Cycle the Architect. So the Songs is going to make 8 currently. Cast it. Cycle Architects. Dark Ritual. Firm count's pretty low. That is a concern. One Songs. I could try to... I could try to flash back to teachings, which is essentially plus two mana on songs. So I'd have one songs left in my deck. I'd have one songs, one reaping with 30 something cards left. I feel like that's a little bit of a trap. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this and we're going to do the same thing. Oh, apparently I wasn't holding the control key fast enough. That was awkward. I didn't actually want to do that. Damn. Reaping the graves. This is for five. Return one Street Wraith. And the reason I'm only returning one is we have to pay some respect to Fire Blast. Okay, keep cycling. Another Swamp does not help. Cycle. Hold on to the Dark Ritual. Go to eight. Cycle Healer. That means that we can cast Teachings now. From hand. A lot of lands. Return that last uh, Architects. That was bad. Okay, so now we'll cast Teachings. We'll go get Songs. This makes 12 mana. That's not a whole lot. Flash this back. So we're going to be casting Reaping the Graves for 10 with 8 mana floating. Definitely in a tough spot here. I'm drawing towards 1 songs of the damned i could tutor for it but it doesn't actually make a meaningful amount of mana so i don't want to do that return the horror of the broken lands up top i'm going to return the street rates last basically i want to be able to cycle another street wreath if i draw it first so that way i'm keeping the my count in the graveyard high for songs all right so lotus petal for ploy would be very good holy land all right keep cycling there's a pedal. You can get a couple more cycles in here. There's one. All right, so that gives us a little bit of life here. By life, I mean like being able to continue comboing, not literal life. Scob can get back songs. I don't think that's the move I want to make here, though. Cycle the horror. The three wreath puts me to six. Can we hit songs of the damned? Another cabal ritual is welcome. Wait, is this the last reaping? One, two, three. This is the last reaping, so the scop has to return reaping the graves. I don't have a choice. That's awkward. Cycle. So we really want to hit the songs here. There we go. Let's cast it. And I have one lotus petal left in the deck. Cycle. Cycle. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to do that. I feel like it might be a waste of mana. All right, Repository Scob. If they Fire Blast this, it's actually really bad for us. Trigger. Okay, so we were able to return Reaping the Graves. Okay, we'll bring everyone home. Okay, so based on our opponent not hitting the F6 key, I think it's even more likely that they have Fire Blast. We have to figure out how to beat Fire Blast. So typically here, I'd want to play Stinger, cycle in a Lotus Petal, and play the 
fourth lotus petal. I don't think that's an actual choice for us. All right, so we're going to tap the mountain, play Stinger, nine mana floating. They're at 20 life. Cycle Architects, draw a card. We do have a couple dark rituals and a few cabal rituals in there. We should be able to make it work. Cycle, nothing yet. Cycle, again. That early play of the uh, Tolarian ones might come back to bite me here. How much would songs make? Five. Yeah, right. Um, we have at least one Cabal Ritual left in our deck. Just cycle towards it, I guess. Playing around Fire Blast here is kind of tough. Draw. Another Stinger. I think they've got me. So, we do have... We can cast the ploy to gain a bunch of life, but I have to pass the turn. And then we have to figure out how to win after passing the turn, which is going to be really difficult. All right, the hottest ploy. Discard the Tolarian wins. I don't know what I'm doing here. Discard a whole bunch of lands. We want to keep street rates because they cycle for free. And I think at this point, mana is our choke point. We want to keep lands. Am I supposed to get rid of the scob? Probably. All they have to do now is like just point their burn at my stingers, and I don't think I can win. Implementation. Put out the rebirth, sure. They play a land, they have three cards. They fire blast my stinger. They don't attack. Sure. They have one card in hand. I think the plan here is that I'm supposed to try to double stinger. And then win. Hope that the, for some reason they can't kill my stinger. They use the synthesizer for a chain lightning. So I need them to not have a land in hand. I believe that does it. We're dead. Yep, they wisely pointed at the stinger. Damn. I feel like this game got away from me. Admittedly, this was a game that Celebrant would have mattered. Uh, because I think we would have won with the Celebrant in our deck, but uh, we just didn't have it. Stinger. Are you saying there's a chance? I didn't think about the fourth Stinger being in the deck still. Did we draw a card for turn? No, I think we're a damage short. Unless for some reason... No, because like, their creatures have Vigilance, so they even have a blocker. I can put them to one, I think. Even if our last card is a Cycler, um, we just don't have enough. And I knew the last card was actually Cabal Ritual. I knew that. So I can deal them 10. In a lot of these situations, I wonder if it's that I didn't have access to Blood Celebrant or that I could have done something better. Like, I don't think Blood Celebrant's actually good, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I feel like a lot of the, these games, it's like, what could I have done to make that card not matter? Like, was I supposed to keep Repository Scott there, for example? This has been a brutal league. Like, I've had a lot of success over the last few days. Like, I've played, like, six or seven cycles. For and uh, tonight's just not happening. Word out the swamp. I've been... Hold on. Keep those, and then we board out Street Wraith. That's what it is. Game number two, we're on the play. Sure, this one's a little bit odd, but I think we'll keep it. Due to having the Ingot Chewer, I'm going to get the Red Source. So... This deck is called Kuralta Red because they do have an artifact synergy within their deck. They happen to play three relics in the board. So a deck that can win on turn three and has relic in it, it's kind of tough for us. I know that our opponent had a really slow start that game, but this deck can be very, very fast. They play a blood token, or I'm sorry, the Vildarian Epicure makes a blood token. Let's try cycling to find land. We miss. I'm not interested in blowing our Lotus Petal to cycle, so we're just going to pass. In theory, we could have uh, Ingot Chewered their land, but I don't think that's really what you want to be doing. We'll take one down to 18. The Hottest Ploy. Cycle. Another Lotus Petal. We'll get rid of the teachings here. Put off the Rebirth. Land for turn. They still have four cards in hand. Chain Lightning. We're taking two down to 13. Ay ay ay. Cycle. Am I supposed to try to jam here? Lotus Petal. They blast me, sure. I'm at nine. 
the ritual, the bar ritual threshold, Neville the Hottest Ploy, Spirit of the Ingature, Play Lotus Petal, Cycle of Vantasaur, Play Cabal Ritual, and I think I'm supposed to hold the Reaping here, or the Songs here. I could also try to... No, that doesn't work. Yeah, I am going to return the Ingot Shore because I think it's the card I want to discard to Hottest Ploy. So now we'll cycle the Dinosaur. Cycle Architects. And we ended up getting an extra mana out of Songs by Waiting. So now we have six mana. Cycle Stinger. Reaping. Cycle. Dark Ritual. Cycle. And it looks like now we're returning the Ingot Chewer. And we'll jumpstart the ploy. Just gain a bunch of life. Like, I realize that this is the fizzle uh, thing here. But we're not going to, like, Mystical Teachings for Songs makes six mana. So you make one mana. It's not really worth it. Uh, your Teachings, I guess. Play the theater. Grab a swamp. Pass. And at this point, we're just trying to rebuild. They play a synthesizer. Reckless Impulse is a great reveal. Yeah. Talk about rebuilding. You got it. They still have two cards in hand, three blood tokens, and a synthesizer. This deck has amazing card quality for being mono red. All right. So we're going to use the theater here. Go grab an island. Cycle. We really want to hit like a Songs of the Damned so that way we can try again next turn. That is not a Songs of the Damned. Synthesizer into Rebirth. Okay, so if they have a Bushwhacker in hand, most lists aren't playing Bushwhacker anymore, but if they did, we would be dead here. They used the Rebirth. I wonder if they were just digging for Relic, and it looks like they were, and they actually hit the Relic, but they don't have the mana up now to activate it. So I have to draw into songs here or i don't know if cabal ritual even does it it might draw <sighs> that was weird that's the game i mean i unless i hit like songs reaping off this there's one reaping left in the deck okay so that was brutal <sighs> that was a one four uh i obviously not what i wanted i have loved Maestro's Theater, that, that will not change regardless of how this league went. I know that this league was a little bit rough. So my takeaways, I still love this deck list. There's actually not a whole lot I would change. I still don't want Blood Celebrant despite that one loss. I, I think that was a corner case and I could have played better to get around it. So my ultimate takeaway here is, and I'm going to ask the viewers here. I know that Chilerian wins did not look good this league. There was a couple spots where it was fine. But there was a number of spots where it was awkward. Would you, the viewer, go back to two repository scob, two main deck ploy? Or you could do two ploy, one wins, or two scob, one wins is another alternative. I would like your feedback in the comments down below. But that would be really the only change I would be looking to make here, is that maybe two Tularian wins just isn't where you want to be. Um... But I've been playing three this week, and three was fine, but maybe it was just a bad league. I'm sorry that the one I actually recorded was a 1-4. I know that's uh, kind of tough. Like, I 4-1'd last night with the same list, so that's the variance of magic. It is what it is. Thank you for watching. I know this was a long one. Cycle Storm videos tend to be a little bit longer, but if you watched all of this, thank you. Um... Have a great day. Keep storming all that good stuff. And I really do think this is the core of the list that we will be playing in 2023. Um, don't let one bad league dissuade you. Like this deck list is great. See ya. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.